Hello and welcome to The Last Standy, a board game podcast coming to you from three thrilling countries in Europe. In Belgium, we have Alexis. From Belgium, hello. In France, we have Audrey. Hi, everyone. And on a little island in the Baltic Sea, we've got me. Hello, Fen. Hi. Hey. Uh, This is the second part of our big, like, overly long talk about Kingdom Death Monster, um, because the Gambler's Chest is landing in Europe sometime in the next month, and we wanted to get into talking about it, uh, in part because, let's face it, The Last Standee actually exists because Kingdom Death exists. It's the common game between all of us. Uh, There are other common games, but it's the thing that sort of brought us all together, and the podcast title is a reference to Kingdom Death as well, and other things. But before we go on to everything we're going to talk about now, uh, Audrey, how are you doing? Um, I'm, I'm fine, thank you very much. I am currently on holiday uh, at my in-laws. Uh, yeah, it's very good because I've been very stressed at work lately with lots of short deadlines and difficult stuff. Uh, so I'm... Yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying uh, this little time. I took, of course, a miniature to paint with me uh, when we have downtime, which we haven't had yet, uh, which hopefully should be my scale model challenge entry at the end of the year, uh, going to be a bust. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm like many people, I'm like tracking the boat uh, for the EU. Um, when we do re- this recording, the uh, labels for Australia have started uh, going out, so it's getting to be a zigzag between spoilers, right? So I can try to have as much of a naive, let's say, gamblers uh, experience as I can. Yeah, I think I don't have much more to say on my, let's say, current status. Uh, so what about you, Alexis? Well, last recording was two days ago, so not much since the, the last uh, podcast, uh, if you want to but know I what I'm doing. Know. That is true. I'm doing, I'm doing quite <laughs> well. Uh, a bit stressed. I'm currently tr- uh, planning to, to move uh, from my, the place that I've lived in for the past five years. Uh, I'm going to move back into the big city, so it's going to be very nice, uh, closer to, to people. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and Yeah, and that is uh, about it for me, um, on the, the big news kind of thing. Uh, and Fen, uh, did you have any uh, life-changing event in the past couple of days? Well, I didn't, but for Audrey's uh, purpose and reference, uh, this week has been an absolute nightmare because all of the plans I had in regards to recording have been consistently uh, defeated by family members. Um, I was going to record on Monday because my partner was in the office and uh, I couldn't uh, because my uh, one, of, uh, one of the in-laws, uh, my father-in-law, decided um, that it was time to get the wood delivered and... Because, like, they pick it up and one of our neighbours has the trailer and they go and get it, uh, um, have it dropped by crane into the trailer, I'm kind of, I feel obligated to just get on with it. Uh, Luckily, uh, the family's all over here on Gotland for holiday and a a bunch of people came from two doors down to help unload it. So it only took two hours to unload. But then I got a message on Tuesday again saying, hi, we're gonna we're bringing a second load of wood now, uh, today. And I was like, okay, well, Tuesday's a write-off as well then because I have to wait for that and I have to do everything. And, you know, blah. Uh, then Wednesday, my partner was working from home. And uh, in the evening, uh, originally, we were going to go over to, to the in-laws and play board games um but my partner wasn't feeling very well uh very stressful time in work and everything and um as a consequence uh i went by myself and we played calico and base game everdell uh, oh and a grand time was had with tiny cute animals they were i can imagine very popular with um with my partner's niece who is, she's always been a big, um, big cat fan. 
uh, Hello Kitty and everything. So Calico was a massive hit. And then it turns out, and I'd completely forgotten this, there's a cat faction in Everdell. So that was a smash hit as well. Uh, yeah, now you can just introduce her to Root and the, it will be complete. Um, she she visited my attic on the Tuesday, the gaming attic, and she was very taken by uh, Margot Marquis de Kitty Cat. Um, <laughs> Marquis de Cat uh, up there in the attic. So, yeah, who knows? But uh, I think she... Everdell was, like, a little bit beyond her capability to play without assistance. So I think I think Root's a few years away. So mm, yeah. That's it. Wood, wood, and then wood turned into board games. That's been my days. Oh, and last yeah. night we played the fourth... Uh, scenario in Arkham Horror uh, Path to Carcosa and a oh. grand delight was had but um, I'm not going to go into oh. huge spoilers that scenario is quite nasty so two investigators uh, have departed from the campaign um, and we've got to pick new ones so rest in peace Joe Diamond is unbreakable um, and Joe Starr and uh, Vincent Lee, the Doctor, mm-hmm. they're, they're, mm-hmm. they're gone. So that was it. That was my my week. So there was actually some extra stuff compared to previously. Uh, so let's get on to some more talking about Kingdom Death. Um, and uh, well, Audrey, you're the uh, quote unquote guest at <laughs> this time, <laughs> as Alexis and I were both here previously so i'm going to yield the floor to you you can talk about you know maybe how you encounter the game and your thoughts on it and obviously your thoughts on the hobby side and everything so i'm going to shut up and and uh sit here and listen yeah my 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 first encounter with the game was during the kickstarter uh i was very new at that time Uh, it was the end of 2016 and i had started let's say looking into bigger board games uh, six, eight months ago. And when I start finding a new hobby or stuff, I generally dive uh, head first in and eat, let's say, as much uh, piece of information as I can, as, as much content as I can, browse as much stuff, buy as much stuff as I can. It, it's always uh, exhausting when the wave uh, goes out and this one still has not gone out um let's not talk about the current wave of makeup um let's get back to uh kingdom death so yeah i, I was browsing the kickstarter and i i and i didn't understand what i was reading about uh i i got completely lost uh, on the kickstarter page and of course it was being the first uh, front big thing in the board game kickstarter uh, section so i was like what, what what the fuck is this? I, I I can't understand what they are selling, what the content is. I was completely lost. So I closed the page and I did not get back to it until I think it was probably spring 2017. Uh, I was watching at Shoshi uh, painting. Uh, if if anyone here wants to uh, look at Shoshi's uh, magnificent miniature painting page. Be my guest. Go ahead. Uh, so she is an amazing uh, painter and she does lots of Kingdom Death. So that's definitely a page you want to follow if you do not already. Do. Yeah. So she <laughs> is a absolute jeb of a person. Um, uh, I've I've known her pretty much the whole time I've played Kingdom Death. Uh, and yeah, I agree. Like she's she's got a wonderfully unique style because she started off as a watercolor painter and that translates mm. across into her pieces. They're very unique and they're very pretty. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at her streams and she was painting Kingdom Death and uh, it was core game stuff uh, and maybe some of the original white boxes. And she started talking about it and to the people and I was like, oh, 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 that, that, that sounds interesting. And I actually ended up opening the Beasts of War um, videos starting from the very start. And I watched maybe three of four videos just enough to see uh, an antelope uh, fight and 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 I got completely hooked in I was oh, oh this is this is amazing this, this is what I need right now in my life this is ah, how can I get it and uh, at the time they were still accepting the order for the core game uh, I ended up looking with these videos in September or October uh, 
2017. And so I could pre-order it with st still a discount and have it delivered. Uh, and I was completely amazed by the amount of content. I was living in Italy at the time uh, in a very small apartment. Alexis have been, has been there, so he can testify that it's a very, it was very small. Oh, it, it, <laughs> it was very was... small and it was not ready for a game this big. <laughs> Oh, yeah, not at all. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do with this box? And I ended up ordering the Felder uh, big storage boxes, like with the plastic uh, big storage, because I knew that I was going to go back to France at some point. And I was like, yeah, that's going to be uh, my both storage and transportation uh, boxes. And it still is to that time. I have lots of cupboards now um, and so the boxes are in and the miniatures are ordered uh, in. So uh, Best one of the best purchases I did for organizing my kingdom death with the Excel laser uh, insert, uh, and so yeah, we we, we started playing uh, a bit, and uh, I I, I I I fell in love with the butcher as that early that Nemesis is just amazing. I love the butcher. I love the butcher level two. I love the butcher level three. That's my favorite. I I love how the stakes and the adrenaline gets higher all the time in this fight. And so yeah, I was like, oh, now I need more because as I said, when I start doing a new thing, I have to dive in and I have to get everything I can. So I pre-ordered the gambler's chest and I was low on money at, at that time because my husband uh, was not working in Italy due to language um, issues uh, and learning another language issues. Um, yeah, that's, that's, this dyslexia is very hard on people. And uh, so I was like, what, what can I do? And through friends here and there, I managed to piecemeal uh, one of a few expansions that I prioritized, and of course I pre-ordered the Gambler's Chest. So I have a 2017 Gambler's Chest pre-order, which, which I paid, I think, $225. Uh, Still a good which price I, for it. Oh, def definitely, definitely. And yeah, a few, uh, let's say, uh, current expansions, like there was the Gorm, uh, Flower night because I know fan what you said, but the miniature is so pretty. I needed it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. We we talked about the flower night, and out of the three of us, I believe I'm the one who's still most positive on it. From in the you know between Alexis and Alessio, um, I've made my piece with the flower night is, and it's super pretty. And my only hope now is that when we get to the abyssal woods, they give us an alternate, um, net, you know, like version of mm. the flower night. If we're going to end up having to fight it. That's it, you know. Uh, it's still one of my yeah. favorite because it has True Blade, and True Blade is one of my favorite uh, fight, secret fighting arts in the game because um, it like it makes swords something really unique and special. But also, you have to not wear anything on your head, uh, and that's really cool. So, uh, I agree with you yeah. entirely, and I I think if you should own the Flower Knight if you play Kingdom Death. If nothing else, it makes life easier for newer players, and it helps population and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I, I pre-ordered through friends. Uh, I think yeah, Flower Knight, Gorm, uh, probably Sunstalker, maybe Dragon Knight, Dragon King. I don't remember. Uh, Alexis ended up getting two uh, Dung Beetle Knights, and he sold me one uh, at at regular price. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I got the other ones. Uh, let's say little by little when it was delivered and or on the ship. And uh, I was still in Italy by then since I left Italy in spring 2019. And I started counting my pennies because remember money was still uh, short at that time to get ready at Black Friday 2018 because I said, oh, and everyone was like, yeah, it happened at Black Friday 2017. It's going to likely happen likewise at Black Friday 2018. And then I was like, oh shit, I should have waited more and get a uh, uh, blackest bundle so I would not so I would be able to get all the promos and stuff, uh, but shit happens. I mean, you miss an opportunity and well, you, you make what you can later. And so in 2018, just at the time uh, the pledge manager opened, I grabbed the future expansions bundle and it was just a just few minutes before they updated it with the COD price increase. <laughs> and so one hour later, I was like, oh, now it costs 100 more. So, oh, oh yes, I'm so lucky. <laughs> Um, well, my money is still in limbo for now, but uh, when when I get COD and 
since Cambria's test is being delivered, let's say that my hopes of things being delivered at all is are getting much higher. So when I do get COD uh, next like late next year, I don't I don't know uh, because anyway I think some of our expansions are going to be delivered before. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to roll on the floor loafing from the just, the just the sheer amount of plastic that I will get for $50 plus shipping plus VAT now. Um, but I'm still going to loaf uh, at Games Workshop, at Atomic Mass Games, at any other plastic producer for the amount I will have paid. Uh, and, and I do expect it to still be good quality. Less equal due to the amount of time it has been developed for, but um, yeah, and uh, I, Alexis helped me get the promos since uh, due to not being a blackest bundle, I could not get uh, most of them. Yeah, uh, they are not they were not av available individually, but he helped me, and uh, I will have the full uh, experience. Um, so yeah, everyone following the podcast knows that Alexis uh, and my husband and myself, uh, I've been gaming together uh, as our timetables and travels allowed us to. So the, uh, I, I like, I mean, I know some people were like selling pre-orders for the gambler chest and changing the address on the page. But it's something that you still, uh, how do you say, can have a hard time trusting people. But uh, I mean, when, when you know each other and regularly game together, it's it's very different. Yeah, it makes things a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. And in parallel to that, I was buying lots of miniatures as well, mostly generics, uh, Echoes of Death, or I love the Echoes of Death. Um, and I mostly stopped buying miniatures a year, a year and a half ago ish, um, first because friends started charging VAT at the country entrance. I enjoyed it while it lasted, but uh, at some point it stopped. And because at uh, first I'm slightly clumsy, um, and so uh, I end up breaking resin, so I stopped buying resin because uh, if I was going to break it, that's not much of a point. Oh yeah, uh, tell prime... me about it. I've I've got Izanagi from San Kakushin. I've broken him four times already <laughs> while pa while painting him, and I have him part assembled. It's it's really sad when it happens. Yeah, and and the, the first photo resin that Kingdom Death uh, did were very overcured and very brittle. Now it's a bit better, but uh, as well in the last year ish, uh, there hasn't been that many miniatures that they've done that really spoke to my heart like they did Pasha Pasha I love them the as well there was Summer Cyrus doll and they were all uh, designed by the same artist when Dream um I, I'm sorry I'm probably butchering that um and uh yeah these three were like they spoke to my heart so much uh, at that time so i had to get them and sit them i i was not convinced with anything like all the beta stuff uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that uh i mean there are enough miniatures in plastic uh which for me and the durability is better in the game in the expansions there are so many of them and i and i'm still selling my all my armor kits and even with selling them, there are so many narrative uh, miniatures that I can keep them. And I mean, I'm going to die, even if I die at 85, 90, I don't know, but I will not have painted everything I have to this day. Uh, so I do not need all this extra stuff. And all the beta stuff was, in my opinion, very good for all the people that love the game, love the designs, love playing with what you see, what you get, and having miniatures that do fit the game narrative and what they're doing, etc. But I'm not part of these people. So I was like, I don't care. And all the beta stuff is bound to come in their final version at some point in an expansion or not, if they do not manage to make a final version. So I don't need these yeah um, yeah I, I think that's a wise way to be with the beta content i get it because i need to review it um but i think that we've seen the best designs like the um sunline armor will get a white box release and the value on the beta stuff is really variable sometimes it's it's really interesting great new stuff and sometimes it's just some little funky idea that they had that they wanted to bring in uh, you know bring to life so yeah. I, th I think you. I think the smart, uh, sensible play if you're not. 
buying them is always to uh, just wait to see what comes out in white box. I would also say for for white box and uh, and and resins in general, just just buy the stuff that you want to paint because if it's not really worth it just for the cardboard, usually. Yeah, since since the last recording, you did Gen Con has started, so that's a little time time stamp. But um, I'm going to probably buy because of the four and 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 exactly sure because i like it less than the previous installments of the series um paladin is great no 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 questions asked paladin is great uh novice feels less like a novice in this box so um, uh, uh, i don't remember which other one there is and there is a kind of arrow mage which didn't yeah. exist in generic and doesn't feel like it fits here yeah there's um there's the boxer who has oh, sure. yeah, thank a you. really exciting pose and uh, she's holding, she's wearing um, crimson croc gear, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and I can't re remember who, yeah, the curse conductor is the arrow based one. I'm kind yeah, of disappointed that they keep doing range stuff in almost every single box uh, of these. Um, like the, the bows seem to be something that, I think maybe every release has had an archer, apart from possibly yeah. the first one. I think that the first one had Rolling Gate, right? I think Rolling Gate's in two, because the first one's oh. the Necromancer, the Fighter, uh, the Mage thief. in Silk Armor, and the Thief. Yeah, so the first one doesn't, and everyone after has. And um, I'm going to be briefly beat my rawhide drum on this. We're still not getting whip support, and I am so sad. Mm. Yeah, it's one of the fun, the most fun weapons to play with. So, it's yeah, um, I I love whips. My partner loves whips in fantasy games in particular, uh, so they always want to use those. Um, and in Kingdom Death, you just end up using the same few whips over and over if you're going to do that, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, I'm also still bummed out that thrown weapons do not have a weapon specialization as somebody who recreationally throws daggers and axes because mm -hmm. I have a big garden. Um, there's a lot of skill involved in them. I watch people on YouTube who you know, can throw the same weapon into virtually the same spot multiple times in a row, even if there's one thing previously. And I'm, I don't understand why thrown doesn't get the same treatment as everything else. Uh, but at least we're getting fan in one of the beta contests. Yeah, that's and, fun. And, 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 and this miniature, the same miniature, I am so going to buy her. It's like um, Miko from the Sandstalker expansion. The pose and stuff is very close, but it's like an, an, ex, ah, an updated Miko. And even if it's going to cost me a close to 60 euros total, uh, due to 30 euros for miniatures, 20 euros for shipping from Kingdom Death, that's horrendous. And then close to 10 euros uh, in, in taxes, well, a bit less for the miniature plus shipping due to the dollar, two euros being a bit better now. Uh, but that's going to be a super expensive mini for me, uh, but I'm I'm so going to get her. She's, she's amazing. She looks great, yeah. Yeah, but the Echoes, I'm still torn because... Not it's not bad, but for me the echoes one two three were so good. This one is disappointing in comparison. Um, it's not bad. It's not, uh, and I'm just speaking from a miniature point of view. I haven't looked at the gameplay stuff because I don't give a fuck about that. Uh, I would still use it, yeah. but that's not what I buy the box for. I mean, seventy five dollars. You do not buy these for four fighting guards and no, my son. No, absolutely. You buy it for yeah, yeah. Sorry, carry on. I was gonna. So, so yeah, I, I I I don't know because I was like, yeah, do I bet on it still being on store for Black Friday? And, and at the same time, I'm going to diverge from Kingdom Death slightly, but Atomic Mass Games has announced a new MCP Marvel Crisis Protocol core box with updated skirts and two Captain Marvels. Uh, ah, I don't, ah, I, I don't know. At some point, you have to do some choices, and I'm not talking about only monetary choices, but also storage uh, choices. Uh, I may end up getting everything just for the sake of all vehicles because they're still good, but they're not that good compared to, I mean, the, the, the monk, like, ah, oh, the monk is amazing. And to me, the boxer is, is good, but not as good as the monk. And I was no, waiting I... for a samurai. I wanted the samurai, where is the samurai? 
Yeah, I uh, I really want them to do um, Echoes of Death. I know it's not the right franchise, but I want them to revisit the Savior resins with new scale because mm, all um, of the Saviors are amazing. I'd like a box set of like each of the different year Saviors and the male Savior mm. um, uh, with some stuff linked to them. But I, I think at this point you're right to not worry about the game content because you're allowed five strain cards in your deck, um, in your fighting deck. So there's diminishing returns on value for every time you get more of these, unless you're somebody who plays and then plays and then plays and plays. So they get randomized. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and even then, the fact that you need to unlock the strain, uh, it's, an, it's a fun concept, but it doesn't work for 60 hours games that uh, would take weeks and weeks if you play with people. So, Yeah, it also feels really gamified when you're sitting there and you're like, okay, so in order to do this particular yeah. thing, I need to do this and then this and then this. And I know it should just be something that happens organically. But there's so many strain unlocks already that if you start, uh, like if you refresh everything and you clear it and you go from the beginning and you just have a, a sheet with the, all the strains on there, it's it's a lot of information and yeah. you will forget about it. Even if you like assign a role to somebody of, yeah. hey, keep an eye on the strains. Did, did we did we add a ber uh, berserk drinking a frenzy potion? I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... um. And and I still think the unlock for the monks strain is kind of, in some ways, uh, it... it's it, you have to get to the gold smoke gold smoke yeah. night and lose. Uh, and ultimately, I did it by getting to the gold smoke night and gen then just like throwing the fight, because I was just like, I know I can beat the gold smoke night, but I legitimately want to unlock this in the normal way. So also for me narratively um spoilers are not like i'm not gonna go into detail but i i don't care about the end uh, of people of the lantern in 1.5 or 1.6 because i don't feel like there's a huge difference yeah well just mm. become the hand and throw the fight and i mean with the way i personally play i would just toss all the fighting just together and not care about yeah you have to have this amount of fighting of unlock fighting yards from strain and whatever and then just you know keep the strains apart and then just take them uh, as i do and just but apart like achievements like yeah i did it it's it's funny but not link it to the fighting yards and i mean we we we've had uh, quite a few people from uh, kingdom death like adam itself uh, on the um, fan discord the london's uh rain we have uh we had clark uh, from the dev team uh we have a uh, taste master currently um who are sometimes helping with some um I should say confusing rules rules or uh, very specific points uh, or situations that may arise and they have basically stated several times in, in different uh, ways uh, to say it but it is a sandbox game. Do as you wish. And I mean, Martin uh, told us that, uh, a, a little bit of that when we did the interview. And I think that it's good to have several game designers uh, that have this viewpoint. Like, we have a game. We have systems. We offer these to you. And at the end, you guys decide how you have fun. I mean, there is, uh, in the Gamblers expansion, we have seen, seen snippets from here and there, like guidelines from the, for the Nod uh, system, which will be expanded in the campaigns of death, but some guidelines like, yeah, this is how you build a campaign, you take this amount of monsters from each Nod, and you can do something. But uh, it's a guideline. It's, it's like color theory. You understand it, and then you break it, and then you have fun with it. So I, uh, if, if I buy this Echoes of Death, I'm going to toss all the fighting yards with all the fighting yards I have and not care about the strain uh, yeah. other than achievements yeah. like I do with all the other strains. And that way, if we say, oh, did we unlock it? Did we get, the, do we get, the, well, who cares? We, we yeah. get the fighting yards anyway. And yeah, and, and I mean, like, yeah, I have lost a card, which is called Deja Vu. And, no, actually, I have not lost it, but... Uh, um, it's it's in a vault. It's It's been it's been sequestered away from everything else. Um, yeah, yeah. Who, who cares? It, it, it's because I just do not want to. Hey, you get into the Phoenix, you draw this card, and oh, shit, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, 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 when I write um, for Kingdom Death, I stick official. Um, but what I do when it comes to strains, uh, 
I will have five randomly inserted into the deck as per the rules, but I will put all of the milestones that I could possibly unlock during the campaign out in a sheet for me to reference to. And if I unlock them during the campaign, then I'll pop, I'll pop the fighting art on that particular survivor unlock, and then it doesn't get shuffled into the deck again, just so I have some variety along the way. Uh, you know, because it is, as you said, and as I've always purported, it's a sandbox game. Um, you don't have to play uh, meta if you don't want to. You don't have to play by the rules if you don't want to. Uh, fun is always the goal of a game that's cooperative. Yeah, that's and a good I way mean, to play it. There is a settlement event. Okay, it's from a white box, but it's still a settlement event that says, count as many times you cheated during this campaign. That means cheating is allowed. And that means that, yeah, people do cheat, and the Kingdom Death team acknowledged that. So I don't care. Uh, yeah, a board and... game is meant to, to be played and to have fun. It's not some uh, uh, contest or a tournament yeah. or anything. Yeah, it would be very difficult to do a Kingdom Death tournament. Um, <laughs> you would probably have to have like a setup showdown and then have like points scored depending on um how things occur um maybe but and it, it'd be a lot of work it, you'd have to do so mm. much so yeah it's not it's not a tournament game it's a cooperative game played with your friends um with lots of weird little pieces of art so uh yeah yeah you do what's fun for you and if demolishing monsters um incredibly precisely and spending hours and hours in a single showdown squeezing every resource out of a monster is your idea of fun that's cool if you like to just play fast and loose and go along and explore and try different weird things as you go, that's also really cool. So yeah, you know, express yourself. Yeah, express yourself and have fun with your friends. Play with friends, that's better. Well, unless you like playing alone, in which case play alone, that's better for you. <laughs> Um, and 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 yeah. Um, as as far as my campaign experience goes, because I still have to go through it, I've played uh, a huge amount of lantern campaigns up to the butcher because uh, I had a few occasions to do introductions to friends, and I generally try. It's a bit uh, out of the time squeezed uh, to bring them to the butcher in an afternoon plus evening, but uh, I tend to manage. I help them and take the bookkeeping out of the hands of the new player and get to the butcher. Let's just say, yeah, you see, this is a boss fight and this is a, there, there is a kind of gauntlet all the time, slightly leading to that boss fight and we have to be ready. And if you replay it, you know what is expected to have let's say in strength uh, as you get to this bus fights and so yeah i've played i think uh five or six uh long -term campaigns i have to the butcher uh we played one with alexis that went to the end no yeah not the end uh yeah we, Very we did close got to the end, end. Didn't yeah. we with uh was it uh people of the sun no we we brought stars to the end okay okay yeah we did uh, yeah, Lantern, no, I actually think I did not finish Lantern because I don't remember anything that the um, Gold Smoke Knight does. I, I I have never played against the Gold Smoke Knight. I have, I'm not sure I've pl even played with the Watcher. I remember a campaign ending at the second uh, or third, I, I think second Kingsman because I think there's only two times Kingsman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you. Um, I really do think at some point you should uh, get to the Gold Smoke Knight for a fight against it because it's a really well designed showdown. It's it's fantastic yeah. fun. It's it's a lot better than the Watcher, and it's just a shame that it it feels a bit more tacked on. But I ended up having to move, new job, uh, difficulties, blah blah blah, other games, blah blah time being. Fired from my job, blah blah, unemployment, depression, blah blah, new job, no time, etc. etc. So I have never managed to get there. We wanted to start a sun campaign with Alexis, and due to all the shit happening, uh, it ended up not uh, being a reality, or maybe we just did one or two years. Uh, I don't remember. We, so we played actually, some yeah. sun through Tabletop Simulator for a while, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but not a lot. We didn't get that far, if I remember. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Um, 
So, yeah, I, I have never tried fighting against uh, the Manhunter. We tried Lion God once. I have never used the tree expansion. Um, we did Slenderman, and, and that was pretty fun. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we did the Dung Beetle Knight, but ended up not fighting it that much. Um we did Sunstalker, I think, up to level three, and that, I love the Sunstalker and with the shades and stuff, it's it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I I actually have never fought the Flower Knight. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, my, we, my we did we fought it at your old apartment in Italy. We did. Oh yeah, yeah, we yeah. did. Uh, yeah. I have forgotten about fighting mm -hmm. the Flower Knight because it happens uh, once or twice. <laughs> I should say that. Um. So I have, of course, never tried doing anything about the um, Green Knight armor um, because I, I don't really care about it. Yeah, uh, that's, that's fair. Um, I, I'd say the Green Knight armor is fun to unlock, um, but then once you have got it, it's very much like, uh, okay, so the game currently can't stand up to what this armor does. And if you like that... Um, like main character power uh trip kind of thing it is enjoyable um for myself i've ended up it's just something i build the sword for or the shield for or the helmet because the helmet is exclusively uses dung beetle knight gear so it's basically a dung beetle knight uh, resources sorry it's basically a dung Ooh. beetle knight helmet and you can even use it with rolling armor so that's kind of where i landed with it but I think we'll all be changing our tune once campaigns of death arrives and we have to face the verdant lord yeah, I'm very excited yeah. for that. Yeah, I'm also very excited for the third Antlet miniature. It's so good. Oh, it is so good. Um, and so, yeah, my, my current plan basically is uh, to wait till I get my shipping notification for the Gambler's Fest, which is not before 10, 10 days is minimum, I think, because the boats still like to arrive, get unlocked, unloaded. I don't think there is the trans shipping thing that they have in the US. So I think it still needs a few days to get to the uh, warehouse in Ro Ro no, Amsterdam, well, Netherlands. Um, and then from there, maybe they have still some other stuff to handle and then get to it. So it's, it's at least 10 days. And then as soon as I have my shipping notification, I have do you want to come at my home for a weekend, uh, one or two weeks away from there and we play? Um, and we are going to do as much uh, stuff as we can in, in a weekend-ish. Um, and then my other plan is at the end of the year, hopefully after but, uh, unreasonable Black Friday spending might happen uh, and Christmas spending, uh, probably finally buy a board game table, which actually will be a convertible billard that I found um, manufactured in China. But I mean, uh, I cannot afford a Europe made one. It's 2000 plus euros. And no, no, sorry. No. Um, and I think that this actually ta this table is actually going to help a lot uh, for my playing because even though it's less deep than um, specialized gaming tables, uh, so you can't keep any miniature inside, but you can still keep all the rest uh, of the stuff inside. Uh, maybe let's a survivor-sized uh, miniatures should be able to to stay in, uh, but. Yeah, that's probably going to help a lot for for any campaign game, basically, uh, because setup is is long for any campaign game. I'm not going to make a list of them, but uh, even even with inserts, some of them take too long to to prepare for a game. So that's going to help me a lot. And then I don't know how we're going to handle that with Alexis to finish this uh, Gambler's Chess campaign. Maybe we will see to to come back. Uh, rapidly or I, I don't know but I do want at some point to yeah, do a lantern uh, campaign in my new table and really have it uh, let's say regularly played and going forward and stuff but um, I know as well that my experience of the game has been I'm not going to say spoiled or rotted but um as I said already, when I start a new thing, I go head first in it and I read all the things that I can and stuff. And so there are some things like, for instance, the, the flaws of the daggers in the core game that I actually read. And I did not discover that from myself. And in my opinion, it, it took a 
part of the experience out of me. Uh, somehow not not doing the things by myself and stuff. I mean, I, I'm not going to say that the work you're doing then is uh, bad, but I read some of this stuff in a point where I re when I re was not ready for it. Somehow, I don't know if it's clear. Yeah, um, it's it's clear. Yeah, yeah, it's one but, of those things people talk about with watching like playthroughs is it can very much uh, take something away from their experience. And when you sit down and first look at someone who's either like playing a game you've not played before like this, where the surprise experience is a big part of it for some people, or likewise you read something like, you know, whether I've written it or it's stuff on other forums or in discords and people talk about certain things, it can take the shine off it. Uh, and mm. that varies from one person to another. So unfortunately, sometimes you walk into it and learn, hey, I'm the person who wants to like make, make these steps and do these things blind. Um, and then others may be like, no, thank you. Um, I want I want everything spoiled in advance because that's yeah. what I enjoy. Uh, yeah. Uh, ultimately, I think both ways are valid. But whenever I'm like on Reddit or on BoardGameGeek and somebody talks about things, my recommendation is always sit down and at least play to the butcher blind and see how you feel because a blind player will generally get blindsided by what the butcher's doing. So that at that point, when you have that experience, you can be like, oh, cool, great, I'm going to go again. Or you're like, oh, that sucked. I really wanted to get past this. Uh, and you'll know where you want to be. So it's just yeah, it's just the nature of things. I, I, I think this is going to be, a, I'm going to say semi-vanilla experience because, I mean, I have a few uh, settlement uh, events that are shuffled in the deck and I'm not going to take them out. Uh, some fighting guards, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to add like Gorm and some Stalker, I think, and not even change any Nemesis, even though I hate the King's Curse. Uh, but that can be managed um, unless your King's Curse uh, survivor ends up losing a, a, a leg, which makes this so annoying with the step as well. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to try to approach it like, yeah, I, I know stuff, but I still haven't experienced the Gold Smoke Knight. Uh, I'm not sure I have experienced the Watcher and I want to see them. And I haven't read that much stuff on them, so even if I am going to optimize the gear a bit because I know the stuff, I'm going to experience them uh, as blind as 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 mm -hmm. can still be. So yeah. that's going to be a great thing. Yeah, well, so, uh, when it comes to the Gold yeah. Smoke Knight, I've actually never spoiled how you should um, undertake the fight. Uh, but I have said, I think mechanically... The lead up to the Gold Smoke Knight is really nicely done. Um, you know, it, when you get to the Gold Smoke Knight, you'll sort of look and go, oh, I see what the game is doing. This is really cool. All right. Uh, and, and have a fun time, even if nobody's, even if you don't know what's coming from the Gold Smoke Knight, which is sweet. Yeah, the, the last few years before it's kind of pushed you in the right direction, which is, it's good game design. Um, and I really. I think that the GC is also going to be a lot more fun to play blind because there's probably going to be less um, design faux pas in uh, in it uh, because the base kingdom death has some stuff uh, that is supposed to blindside you, like the, the butcher and some stuff that is not, like building some... Uh, not realizing that some resources are extremely important early on and... Uh, you shouldn't actually build uh, the, the armor from the base monster because it actually is uh, kind of a bad idea early on. Uh, I'm thinking that the GC is probably going to be a, a lot better balanced, uh, at least with the time that they, they put in it. Um, it better be. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, also uh, one thing is that I, I know what the ending of Flanton is after the gold smoke night. And, and I have to say that knowing that is actually one of the things that made me not want to do the gold smoke night for a while. Because I hate, I hate these kind of endings for any series, uh, for, for anything that let's say yeah, takes a short on. amount of time, hold, for hold, anything that hold, takes hold, a short amount of time, I'm fine with it. You just give it, yeah. Um, I just wanted to say, like, let's talk about this uh, in some detail now. Um, and for those people who don't want to know the end of um, people of the land, to skip forward about five minutes because yeah, it is worth talking about 
because um, it is, as uh, Alexis called it, it's a little bit of a design faux pas, and it also happens in... Um, we, Audrey, have you been uh, spoiled on the end of the other two campaigns at all? Uh, we, we finished Tars, which basically is like you made an evolution cycle for the Dragon King uh, people. Very, very short. Sun, Sun it's like supernova finish. Um, and Gold Smoke Knight, and Gold Smoke Knight is like basically whether you lose or you win, it's back to the start. You have four survivors with no memory and back to beginning. I, 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 I hate, I hate these back to beginnings on, on things that take uh, a while to play. Like you, you play these 25, 30 years each London, each taking one hour to, to two hours, depending on which year it is. And, and you get to that. It's like uh, Stephen King's fucking black. Uh, or Dark Tower. Yeah. I don't remember. You get back to the yeah, start. Yeah, the dark, dark Tower memory. loops back to the start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I hate that. And I'm going to say, I, I finished uh, Jojo Stone Ocean very recently. And it's a kind of back to the start ish, but oh, with no. a twist. But it's, with a twist? It, 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 it's, it's so good twist. because it leads to Steel Ball 1, and Steel Ball 1 is the it, best Jojo. It technically, well, let's 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 be uh, like, oh, jo uh, spoilers, <laughs> let's for, let's JoJo, see, spoilers no. for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean and the whole thing. Yeah, sure. Um, but <laughs> uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure kind of doesn't go back to the, yeah. the, the yes, start. It, 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 it loops, it's and then, it, um, and then uh, Emporio says the most dangerous sentence in all of uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is, I read a book about something, and uh, mm. you get a reset where the Joe Star line is finally um, doesn't have to deal with Dio's nonsense every few generations anymore, and it's wonderful. But I was just say it doesn't quite lead to Steel Ball Run because it just establishes the multiverses, and then Steel Ball Run is in. Uh, a whole yeah. separate thing, and um, and I haven't yeah. started Steel Ball Run, so shut up about it, please. I'm, I'm no, don't worry, I'm not. I, all, the only thing to say is that they all continue. They all and now it's called the Steel Ball Run universe, and we we got yeah. those three stories happening there. But anyway, what I wanted to get onto is um, it's okay to have a downer ending on a piece of media. There are many absolutely superb films that end in incredibly bleak manner. <sighs> Uh, and also there are um, video games that end bleakly and books that have that same thing. Uh, and it's the reason that it kind of works is twofold. First of all, a movie or a video game or even a book is a shorter experience than a campaign board game. Um, Kingdom Death could last you one campaign half a year of, of weekly easily. playing easily. Um and you are controlling your characters. You are making decisions in what they're, they're doing, the direction they're going. You're building the, your settlement's philosophies. And the biggest mechanical like theme in Kingdom Death uh, is, at its heart, the, adverse, the strength of a human spirit in the face of adversity. It is, from the very beginning, the opening prologue is four survivors looking at people being massacred by a vicious scavenging predator and going, no, no, sir, no, thank you. This is not what's happening. And they kill it. And then they meet other people and they go out and they kill more things. And then a butcher turns up and goes, I'm going to slaughter you all because I'm a, I'm a big bully. And they, and they go, no, get, get out of it. And yeah. they kill him. And, and then the Kingsman turns up and like starts to attack them and they're like no no get out of here we're going to kill you as well and the hand turns up and while the survivors are completely unaware that that the hand is messing with them they they could go like full tilt on the hand and take him down and beat him the um, the, the whole idea of the hand is that the hand ends up respecting the survival because yeah. they show that uh well that survival instinct that they they have and that's what defines them is like they always get back up yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, if a settlement's going to die and their last lanterns are going to go out, they're, they're going out fighting. It's not that they just mm. give up. Um, then, but, then, of course, the big thing um, is the, the discovery that the lantern horde 
is in fact a cocoon for this monster. This um, effectively is the settlement's god is the best way to describe it because in Kingdom Death every settlement core location represents a monster. That monster is feeding inspiration and ideas to the settlement for their own purpose, which varies depending on the monster. And when the survivors discover this like big betrayal, as far as it's concerned, they go, "Well, you know what? Die." We're going to kill our god because you're going to kill, try and kill us. And they do. Um, and then the gold smoke knight turns up um, for its own agenda and reasons, which we only know through Adam's um, descriptions rather than the in-game lore, uh, which is an unfortunate thing. But the survivors again go, hey, um, you're, you're attacking us. Get lost. We're going to kill you. And so the whole campaign has these... Um, has you been told that if you struggle and you strive and you fight, then you will be rewarded. And you get to the end of People of the Lantern, and it goes, what flavour of death would you like? You can have Hammer Smash, or you can have um, Misty Smoke Obedient. Cotton Wool. And it, it, it it's... It's like I understand that nihilism is a big part of what thematically Adam's trying to bring to Kingdom Death, but he has misunderstood the whole thing, which is players are making all these choices along the way and they are constantly being told by the game's mechanics that if you struggle and you strive, you will be rewarded. And they get to the end and he goes, hey, guess what? That reward, whether you win or lose, is exactly the same thing, death. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people, and I was one of, I'm still one of the people who thinks that the very final lines in that for the, for the success condition, the very last word is dead. And it just shouldn't have been there. It should have just been into a dreamless sleep. And you'd have been like, ooh. Even, even, even then, to be honest, for me, even then, it's like I did all this effort to get back at the start. I, I would, I would also just point out that uh, the end of the Watcher is not the best, but it works really well thematically because at the end of the Watcher, pre Goldsmoke Knight, uh, you just basically end up fighting level three monster forever, and it just keep and keep on coming because there's no longer the the Watcher. Uh, uh, pushing monsters away, um, and that's a that's a one that works well mm. for the way that yeah. Kingdom Death functions because you will you will lose uh, you will be forced to lose but you can uh, fight it until the end. Yeah, it's With it's the, the same. Like just goodbye. Yeah, it's yeah. the same theming as the game's mechanics, which is you you can struggle against adversity and you may lose, but you can win and you can keep going um and that's that's a shame uh, really and that's why people of the stars is so well beloved because it provides a narrative change between the two endings if you lose the dragon king loses with you and he is just be you know beyond grief and rampages off for years and years and years um you know deciding not to die despite the fact that he is slowly dying anyway and uh, that's a really bleak ending or you have the other ending which it's not like spelled out people have interpreted it as oh and everyone dies but then you look at the campaign as a whole and you go no this is a this is a structured plan the the tyrant had a plan and knows exactly what he is doing uh, he he is deceiving the survivors, not because he's deceitful, but because, as far as he's concerned, survivors are like ants. They don't understand what's best for them, and his race is what matters. And sure enough, they go through, you know, a metamorphosis into dragon kings. But it's it's not spelled out. It doesn't go, and then they became dragon kings. It's just like a final word that is what it let, makes you look back at everything that's happened in the campaign and go, Oh, Hey, that's what was going on. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Yeah. Like th yeah, this I, is I, a I really, narrative. Yeah. Go on. I, I love this, this ending because there is a different message in the campaign. This campaign is that you may be part of something bigger. You don't understand it until it's too late somehow. And, and, and they feel that, yeah, despite all the mechanics being the same, you have this different message underlying. And yeah, you 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 have all this time to think and think and say, oh, actually, yeah, as you just said, that means that this and this and this and this, where you don't have into long term. And so I think that 
lanterns lead you to a passive ending, while stars lead you to an active ending, where you think you have more stuff to actually do in the evening, in ending, not evening. Um, and and I, th I think that's something that's much more interesting because it keeps the players there and not pushes them aside. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. And to put a little bow on this, and then we can you know, maybe talk about some, some other bits and pieces, uh, what is important is to note that in a board game and a video game, you're giving your players autonomy, and especially when they're controlling characters and everything the game is telling them is, you know, fight, fight and fight and fight, and, have, and, and you will see something. And having an ending that essentially feels like Mass Effect's ending of what flavour, colour ending do you want, um, mm. it, it's... It robs the players of their experience and it lessens everything um, as a result. And yeah. uh, I'm not going to talk about Sun, but let's just say that People of the Stars is the one that has a competent narrative all the way to the end, including the actual ending itself. Sun has a really good narrative up until the end, which is a shame. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm fully on that. And I hope that in the Gamblers campaign, uh, it's it, people of the dream. Uh, I hope that it ends up being, uh, if, even if it's still like, yeah, you, you, you die, I mean, you, you lose against the last Nemesis and it's over, okay? Uh, or you win and there is something just, if, if one paragraph that gives you a little bit of insight and makes you feel. I, I, I have hopes on that. Uh, and, and that's something that has still not yet been spoiled and that I will not spoil myself with. The problem is that I have, uh, like, how to say that, a superior ability to read uh, than most of the people. And so I can open a page and my eye will try to scan it. And so I hope that the ending is thought like somewhere else than uh, on the fight. And I do not, uh, how to say that, end on, on the page by happenstance uh, and uh, because I risk spoiling myself due to this way of I read and I hope this, not, this does not happen. Oh, I would cry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it seems at the moment everything's been sequestered away in the um, various, like, uh, clearly signaled if someone's talking about spoilers. And and I think that's important, an important thing to maintain. Yeah. Um, um, when I come to start writing about the gambler's chest, I'm I've decided I'm just going to start writing about my experiences as going along, and I'm going to header each one with just like the lantern year plus the campaign, um, so people can come back to it and read it when they've experienced the same lantern year and stuff like that. Because you only get to to experience this like once, you know, you get yeah. to experience it blind once. Yeah. And um, my first blind experience of Kingdom Death, in fact, my first. Outside of the Prologue White Line, my first monster I ever faced was the Gorm because I really loved the model. And we played with like a bunch of us, and the Gorm flattened my survivor. My first ever survivor <laughs> was sat on by a Gorm, and, and flatten is death most of the times early in the campaign. It's too much damage to deal with. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, right. That, that's, that's a little bit about narrative and everything, and how we hope that. Um, uh, we hope that Team Death. Uh, has seen how well responded to People of the Stars is and has weighted that in their decisions on how they craft their narrative and how they finish it. Because I'd almost say mm. Stars is a twist ending in some ways because you, you don't fully understand what's going on until you get to the final Lantern year and you do that fight and then it's like, ooh, and I think that's what makes playing Stars better in replays or even better is you now see all the pieces fall in place along the way and it's like oh this is uh, uh, this is cool and fighting the dragon king the hunt events of the dragon king make more sense once you played stars and it's a it's a great picture it's really good uh, right so i was going to talk a little bit about kingdom death simulator and i actually think um this might help you two play together more often once like all the content's out. Uh, so one thing, one thing for sure is that I I got I got the mail a few days ago with the updates where they say where where they basically said automatic setup is in there and yes. that is basically oh. the thing I was waiting okay, for to, to get that might actually point. change things a bit yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I don't. I, as I, I said early, setup is the annoying thing, and I don't want to have a simulator. I still have to deal with setup, and that's a that's the change for me. 
Hi, Editing Alexis here. Uh, Than is going to talk to us about the KDM simulator for 10 minutes or so while streaming it to us. Given the constraint of an audio medium, uh, if you'd like to skip this part, the KDM sim talk ends at around an hour and nine minutes. So skip about 10 minutes for now. Uh, thank you for listening. Yeah, so IGF Kingdom Death Simulator open right now. You guys um, listening are not going to be able to see it, uh, but it helps for reference. Uh, essentially, you can right click, you can click on um, a, uh, a given monster, whether they're on the shelf or not, and there's a setup option, and you can pull any of the showdown setups immediately, Aww. which is really nice. They're going to be adding the hunt setups in the future, but uh, yeah, uh, so, it's, so it's nice and easy. This also, I really appreciate this, which is uh, if we just uh, pick up her, pick up Lucy, as you move around, it highlights like the path you've taken. Um, so it's really easy to count how far you've been and everything. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Lucy, you need to be there. For when I'm recording, um, sorry. Uh, the uh, it, it's really well done. This is so smooth. Like you just click on a piece of gear and it pulls in here, and um, you can look through decks to see stuff. I can, uh, or you can. Uh, well, it's it's. I, I guess I should probably like start from the start rather than jumping in here. Um, so. Kingdom Death Simulator is a digital version uh, of the game. Cool. Yep. That currently it's in beta still. Uh, so only certain people have access to it if they bought keys previously. There's going to be more keys at Gen Con. Um, currently the content uh, has the core game and then you can buy the Gorm and Spidiculous. But yeah. also for people with the Master Key, the Dragon King has been released as well. And... Outside this door, uh, there's a corridor section. I'm actually not going to go into the corridor because there's a shepherd tone in there. And I, are you guys aware of what a shepherd tone is? Nope. Absolutely not. Okay, so briefly, a shepherd tone is a tone that it's like a loop, but the end of the loop fades out and while a new loop comes in. So it can either descend oh, yes. or ascend. Like in, yeah. like yeah. in uh, Mario, the, the staircase uh, sound thing. Yes, yes. So yes. you can okay. either have a descending shepherd tone, which constantly feels like the sound is sinking and sinking and sinking and never gets to the bottom, or you can have a rising one that does the opposite. So they have a shepherd tone out there that's really nicely done, but it is um, it's it's a it's it's a bit extra. Uh, luckily, in here okay. there isn't, um, which is absolutely fine. So you have these cabinets that hold all your miniatures, um, and you can just click in and like I can go click on here and I can click setup showdown and I could have the watcher. All right. Yeah. Well. Uh, you can also nicely just put stuff in your inventory and get them on the table. Uh, this is considering it's a still a beta. This is a really well put together piece. Um, oh, there are lanterns in that chimney. That's so fun. Yeah, there's the, the lanterns for a fire, which you know is a nice reference to the lantern oven. There's this boy uh, who is very. That's very Kingdom Death. I, I kind of love it. This is where all the rule books go, so you can send them up there, and they'll be here on display. Um, and this is a chest where, when you tidy up, if stuff isn't goes, doesn't go back into the right spot, it'll appear in this chest to move things around. Uh, the The game is really smooth. It's just a delight to use. Um, I have problems because I'm so familiar with tabletop simulator that I sometimes mess things up but as a, like just as a quick example here's the game contents and I can go okay I'd like to uh, there we are like and grab I want the white lion resource deck so I can just click on that and I take it out and here it is and I put it down here and oh I I'm looking for a specific card so I can click view deck and it will pop up the full deck in the order it is currently and I can click on a card. So let's let's get the best resource, shall we? The at the eye of cat, and voila, it's taken it out. There it is. Um, and then you know, if I want to put it back in and just click on here, and this is really neat. I don't need this deck anymore. Boom, it's just gone back in the box, and it's back in its allotted place. Oh, nice. Uh, so this is really tidy, really neat, and I think it's just. Um, it is such a well put together product. Uh, so 
honestly, for, for playing playing with people remotely, the only downside right now is everybody needs a license, and mm. we haven't had an availability for people to get licenses until now. Uh, and also, uh, it's cheaper than Kingdom Death, but the full license is three hundred dollars, or you can buy the like cheaper licenses and then pick up the expansions as they become available in the store honestly uh, sorry Lexis I'm nearly done I, I I know you're trying to say something um, I just want to say I think this is one of the most accessible ways to play Kingdom Death the price even if you buy everything separately is so much lower than the physical content I'm excited for this because we're going to see more content creators engage with this game because of how good it is to stream and record yeah does everyone uh, need a license for specific monsters? So, for example, if I have Speedy Killies but Audrey does not, could we play Speedy Killies together? Uh, so, um, I my maybe with the host. Yeah, my understanding is this is a individual person's dwelling, so it's just one person needs the stuff. Uh, you visit, and you know, my if I, if I actually opened my Gorm box because it's closed at the moment, you would be able to access it even if you had the basic license. So okay. not everyone has to buy everything. You could, but you need you, uh, the entry key to get into it. Uh, yes, you do. I did put forward to the um, design team, the team doing the programming, that it would be good if they could put together a cheaper, like client only. So just you, you don't own anything. All you can do is connect to other people's dwellings, because mm, um, yeah. that would be ideal. That's what I need for making the game more accessible to other content creators who are interested. They they can't respond on certain things, so they didn't say whether it is or isn't a plan. But um, ultimately, they they're very very pleasant to provide suggestions to. They take them on board, and where they can give you feedback that they're not uh, unable to disclose, they do. Uh, I so honestly, um, I I think this is really really well done. I think this is. Um, I love the physicality of Kingdom Death, but my, my friends, a lot of them live in the UK. I am super excited mm. to be able to play this with them and not on Tabletop Simulator that just has so many janky bits and pieces uh, that I don't really enjoy it too much. Um, it is more manual than Tabletop Simulator is at the moment, but as you know, they're, they're fixing some things and updating them. My main criticism that they haven't been able to answer yet is is this board here, the... Um, the hunt board, which uh, just uh, obviously has the settlement on the other side, um, and everything you're trying to do with it, like you're supposed to put cards on this board, and yeah, it is a bit of a pain it. to remove the decks and then flip over for the hunt. And I was like, can we please have uh, two of these, or can you separate mm. them apart? Because um, it's something I would. Yeah, find. you want to, you want to keep uh, the settlement side up all the time and have the hunt. Yeah, uh, is there some kind of quick, quick pages access on the rulebook, or is it okay. like all you have so, to go? Um, at the moment, uh, they they only have certain bookmarks. They had full custom bookmark availability in the original um, edition, and they have confirmed it's coming back. They just just not okay. present at the moment. So you can the bookmark pages at the moment just has contents, severe injuries, and glossary, uh, which isn't quite what you need. Like intimacy is obviously a page you want to bookmark, so it will be uh, fixed. It will be sorted out Good. for sure. Yeah. Um, so ultimately. Yeah, I've got nothing but tons of time for Kingdom Death Simulator. I think it is really, really well done. It is the reason I started recording stuff on YouTube, because I was like, finally, I can do what I want to do um, on an official platform, which matters to me. I, I, I streamed, you know, on Tabletop Simulator a bit, but as soon as it became a uh, an official, proper, like, authorised Kingdom Death thing, I was like, this is the only place I'm going to do it, because... Um, I want to support the game. I want the game to go from strength to strength, and I think this is the way that it will reach wider audiences. Um, if somebody's interested and goes, what's with that $420 uh, board game with Plus a the really, really metal name? Um, oh, you can you can learn to play it for like $15 or something. It's great. Yeah. Mm. The, so, the, the only problem is that you, you should have something to import your painted miniatures. <laughs> well, um, uh, yeah, that would be a, a lot. You'd probably need a, a 3D scanner or something. Um, but 
there is going to be hobby functionality. There's a lot of doors in the dwelling that I as I said have not wandered. You know, you know what? I'll I'll very briefly wander into them so you guys can have a look at the um, thing. Uh, Shepherd tone incoming, uh, listeners. You know, you guys, you won't have to hear it. Um, I think it's really cool though. Uh, but there's like all these doors that currently don't do anything. And there's my Gorn box and my dwelling key, which I'm, I you can fully reset the room back to basics. Mm. Uh, yeah, so so there's there's a lot planned for this to come. Yeah, so uh, um, I, I think my like recommendation is if they put more keys up on the store, anyone who enjoys Kingdom Death should probably consider getting the basic. Uh, key as long as it's uh, when it's available and once it reaches full release i can see this game getting a whole new lot of audiences and a lot more streaming yeah i, I think that 2023 2024 might be very strong years for king of death especially if they manage to release black knight and frog dog as uh, it was Supposedly estimated. I, um, it, yeah. it might be poss possible to release those two and hopefully COD by, I'm thinking still 2025, but maybe maybe end of 24. We'll see. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but yeah, I, I think it's going to be time to look at it and time to really watch for because we finally get what the future of Kingdom Death is really going to be after having beta snippets and uh, silly things like the uh, scoop uh, spoon. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I think that yeah, this is really the, the time, and I can still count my losses on Super Dungeon, but that's another matter. Um, and and also, I I think that uh, even on the hobby side. Uh, there have been a few changes uh, in Kingdom Death. First of the photo resin, which I, at first was rough, uh, to be honest. Uh, when I look at my um, uh, white Death High white speaker, like she has lots of lines and she was very brittle. And then I looked at my Death High Holy Mage, and she was much smoother and a slight. She has a little bit of a Bands. Not not a lot, not a lot. It's still photo resin, but a little bit more. Um, there there was still some errors at some point, like the Grimory, which ended up having no chin, and some some ones which ended up then being renamed the Grimory, like in the um, Despicable Me. <laughs> um, but also Kingdom Death branching into bursts, and uh, I've been talking with some friends uh, that are like yeah kingdom death should still do more resin print more and cast more and and i was like but do you realize how crazy the sales amounts of kingdom death resin are and they're like no i don't know and then taking the example of uh, the example of the polish company ignis arts they do lots of bursts mostly bursts uh, once in a while 75 millimeters model they release one piece every month and it's like 300 um copies of each and they take six, seven, eight months, sometimes a year, depending on the uh, model, sometimes even a bit more. And it's considered normal for the miniature painting, uh, let's say, only part of the, the hobby. 300 bursts that sell in, yeah, around a year, let's say, on, on, over, on average, 10, 10 to 12 months. But Kingdom Death, when they release a burst, they have 150, maybe, okay. And they sell these in a few hours, even less for, for sometimes for the burst. When they release a 35 millimeter model, they have 1,000, 1,500 sometimes, and that's maybe not even counting the death cray. And they sell these in a few days, unless there are some that last a bit more. It's, it's, it's completely crazy. I do not think there is any other company that does something that's, that is that crazy for the the miniature thing. And and that's why some people look at Kingdom Death uh, so much and are like, wow. But not only is there like a, a style, but also the amounts are completely crazy. And, and, and I think that having some more game stuff out is also going to help being able to divert people from, oh yeah, but it's exclusive. Let's not mention the 21 Butcher Bust at Gen Con. And I, I don't think there are 
there will be any available on the store for the Gen Con sale, but we'll heat up the store in a few days or weeks. That, that is crazy. Like 21 bucks for $300 each, and they sold that in an hour and a an hour and a half. Like any yeah. non VIP goers to Gen Con could not even dream of getting it. Yeah, it's um, you've really got to think carefully about what aspects of the hobby side you want to engage with, um, and the uh, the the way that the store launches uh, each time is very uh, it's irregular. It's also pretty bad for people who are in the EU to be able to catch yeah. stuff. And yeah, the, the the I I want them to they need to reprint stuff like over and over. Um, you know, into the ground, so to speak, because these are beautiful pieces and there are hobbyists who really want to paint them on top of people mm. who want to collect them and there's people who just want the gaming content and so on. Um, but I imagine they've, they're have they very limited by what their machine capacity can be. You know, it's it's they, they probably don't have the space to be doing what they need to do, which is running a farm of printing, you know, 3D printers uh, over yeah. and over. And even for the molding, you need like these pressure pots to avoid having bubbles and these pressure pots are expensive and you need someone to pour the resin, put it in the pressure pots, put a timer, take it out. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it, and you need space for that. It's, com it's completely crazy. And they, they, they do it themselves. They do it in-house. It's not like, oh, yeah, we, we um, uh, what's the English word for that? Uh, we contract a company yeah, that does the reading yeah, thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it's completely crazy. And there are yeah many beloved miniatures that people would love to see. Let's not mention the Savior 40. Um, for instance, that has not been seen on the store for I don't know how long, but then it has a part that's always broken. Um, and yeah, there are many, many others as well, like for, from, from the generics, so many that haven't been seen uh, for years. And they, they keep doing new stuff, which, which is cool. New stuff is cool. But also, well, then there are always people talking about the scalpers and basically Kingdom Dev team saying that they yeah, do not really like scalpers. But at the same time, having reruns would be a good thing against them. But I, I'd, I, also, I'm not sure how well they could estimate how many of a rerun they could do. Yeah, it's it, it, it's obviously hard for them to judge, and they constantly want to put out new content. I just wanted to ask, what pieces? Which one's the Savior Forty? Is that the one holding the staff? Like yes. Uh, what breaks on it? Because I don't think mine's broken at all. Uh, a pe a piece of hair, like it's going at around the arm, uh, the, the arm that doesn't have the staff. Ah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's not broken on mine, that's nice. I'll oh, Matt, oh, Matt, oh, safe God. In, safe in the drawer. I've never got around to painting her. Um, so, I, I got all of the, the saviors, because I love those ones. I bought one of her a uh, second hand, and yes, it's broken. But that's, that's I was also talking with someone, and that someone told me, oh, I, I don't even know if there is one Savior 40 that exists in the nature and is not broken. And then I can tell them, yes, I know someone that has <laughs> one of them and broken. And one, one thing as well that I can say is that even though I love this series, I'm glad that for now they have branched out a little bit of the Death High series just because of, yeah, it's costing me 60 euros to get one. And I just love this series. Um, hopefully, Echoes of Death 4 will be available in UK, EU, but as it seems that these uh, warehouses are mostly used for the um fulfillments of the kickstarter i'm not sure of that uh but but yeah i i think that the being able to go global and move the taxes and stuff because i mean in france like we, we pay two euros of administrative fees uh, for the import via la post and eight if we do not do it online, but do it when we go to pick the package at the post office or from the uh, postman but when we have the tracking number it does work even from King the Death, where it used to be a, a bit of a mess earlier. But yeah, if we do track the package online, we pay VAT plus two euros, which I mean the two euros are close to nothing. So even though it's still 10 euros per, per, um, per miniature, 
it's nothing like we we talked with Alexis and via the Belgian post. It's uh, uh, more than fifteen euros, I think, of administrative fees for a package, which is yeah. completely mad. Uh, it, it depends on the full price of the package. Like on top of tax, they add uh, an automatic fifteen if it's under uh, under fifty euros, and after fifty euros, it's like twenty five or something. It's it's insane. Like I had to pay an extra forty euros on top of the. Um, uh, taxes for pinups of debt, and I don't mind p paying taxes at all. I I think that's that's fine if the package is coming from from overseas, whatever. Uh, but having to to pay uh, an extra uh, fee just because the people that uh, that shipped a package to me didn't properly file for taxes, uh, that's that's just like the the cost being uh, uh, shifted down to the consumer or to the consumer and that uh that sucks uh yeah. so yeah i had to pay uh, just yeah. an extra 40 40 euros i'm glad that for the gc they're supposedly properly registering taxes uh we'll see how that works yeah well i, 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 hope, I, the, totally does. I hope the labels i hope the labels will be well done that's going to be the last uh, step to, yeah. to make it well but also like if you get a kingdom death miniature and some part is broken and you ask for a replacement and currently people are getting their reworked forsakers and these antlers are always broken and so i was talking with a guy from the netherlands uh, on the uh, fan discord and he was saying that yeah when they send something uh, re as replacement they write 0 0.01 as value and that guy from the Netherlands gets it flagged by the Netherland custom yep, all yep. the time. Sweden, Sweden, same <laughs> thing. If they, they if they don't put replacement part zero value, then there is going to be a handling fee on it, and that is for us is the equivalent of seven and a half euros. Um, uh, you know, not including taxes or whatever. Uh, it's so bad that do, do you know what uh, happened recently? Um, the the when I bought Kingdom Death Simulator, they had a dwelling key, like a physical copy. Uh, they finally mailed that out to me a while ago, and um, it went into customs. It got flagged by customs, and they didn't even. Not the fault of KDM, uh, if you know APG and you know, anything at this point, but the they did then didn't get the customs fee note to me, so I had no idea, and then I got. Uh, emailed a few um, weeks back of hi your uh, your thing returned is not picked up can you give us a new address to send it out and and I was like um, don't bother because I'm gonna have to pay as much for this key as I did for the digital copy I really just wanted the digital copy so um, mm. don't don't ship the package a second time across the ocean with all of that stuff and spend people's time on it I'll just not worry about it um, yeah, mm. it's it's tough. I really hope in the future they can sort out some kind of system to have a regional uh, office in in like the EU and other regions, where like Australia or something, where they can get the store stuff into the country in advance and it's sold to just people the continent um, in advance, and it's just sold to people from that region uh, and the taxes are already included and paid and everything and it will arrive in a more timely fashion because that's they, they they're doing way better than they used to but like you say the prices have gone up a lot on shipping um indeed yeah yeah other question then um did you participate to the pinup painting competition i had to admit i did not browse through all the pictures since you had to click on the picture to see who submitted uh something no no i um I I wasn't able to paint in time because I was still completing the commission I was doing and um, mm -hmm. and so the pinups I painted all like, happened later. But also, I'll be honest, I don't like um, competitive painting. I would prefer to look at a contest and see what people have entered and then I can just be like, I didn't enter this so I can appreciate what's here uh exactly as it is and not suffer any kind of possible bias so i chose not to um even even if there's one of those king's coins you can get or whatever i was like again um i'm i'm, I'm kind of triaging what 
I think is worth me getting. And essentially, it's it's, it's game content. That's that's where I am. I, I was one of those people who did try to collect everything originally, and I realised that would just financially ruin me because you know being a content creator, yeah. creator for a niche board game is not um, a, a great. You know, it's not a profitable living at all. Uh, but, it's you know. it's not a six figures job. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, depending depending on your currency, of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. It is worth saying, yeah, that um, a Swedish uh, kroner is uh, a, has an extra zero on the end when compared to the euro. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I I I did participate, and I do have my king's coin. But um, if, if, in my opinion, and, and I mean, I'm saying that as someone who has now run two uh, competitions on the uh, fan Discord, uh, I, I thought that the rule set was was a bit wonky. Um, like, for instance, doing the uh, your 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 miniature does not need to, should not have appeared on any other website prior to the final thing and. And how do you put such a rule when you are not in a position to enforce it? And I mean, the, we we did have a competition at truthfully the same time, uh, just a little bit earlier. And the fact that we did have some people that participated to both competitions with the same model shows that, and they knew it was running in parallel, shows that they did not enforce the rules. Which I mean, in my opinion, it's it's you may mean like it's it's in, like it's like in board games, you can cheat. Okay, it's okay to decide not to enforce the rules, but then what's the point of putting <laughs> these rules? Uh, but uh, I thought that overall it was good timing on their front to put that, and it was also the time they were selling them on the store, so it was it was a good incentive to people to get them. But I decided to participate with a six hour paint job, which honestly was not that bad. Um, I did not think that it was worth more of my time. And to be honest, even the competition that I was running a little bit before that did not get the attention that it was deserving due to, hey, I was starting my job then. And uh, I was definitely out of time. And the judges, they, 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 they burnt me a little bit for that. <laughs> Which honestly was all uh, in, in fairness, but yeah, I, I think that it's cool that they do try to engage the community and the, these king coins. We we still don't know what's going to happen with them, um, but I think that encouraging community stuff like that uh, for Kingdom Death and, and actually for any company is is a good thing. There is there are a few other miniature. Miniature only company. I'm not talking about game companies that do uh, competitions like that. Uh, I could say Big Child, for instance, Beyond Miniatures that do have uh, quarterly or something like that competitions, only with their products, of course. Um, and I think it's very good to have some community engagement, but uh, I also think that it's good to have, like Big Child, for instance, doing it regularly. It's good to have it coming back, coming back, coming back. And, and I think that that's where. Kingdom Death, um, I'm not going to say might fail, but the past has shown that they are not consistent. Um, so we will see what happens because like the first King's Coin thing was a, a paella competition on the on their Instagram that has not been active since then. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, I think that any company with selling products that can be painted uh, has any interest to organize stuff like that, then, I mean, you have to be a certain size of company to be able to have the time and the people to, to run it. But uh, I like that it does bring engagement to, to the community and we see people paint their stuff more and more and I, I really like them. But that's the thing that I always hated with Kingdom Death. Uh, it's people like, I see so many people buying a first run and buying an anchor of a model so that they can store the first run away uh, in, in, in a drawer or in a cupboard, I don't care, with the other ones. And then they take the anchor and they pay them. And what happens to the first run? And that participate to the inflation and to the scalpers. And I, I, in a, in, to be honest, I'm a, I'm a bit more annoyed at the people that do this than at the scalpers. 
Yeah, well, um, like when it comes to me, because I moved from the UK to Sweden and uh, mm. I had to reduce stuff, um, almost everything of those like earlier runs and that I do have um, is that now in like I've just gotten rid of all the boxes. They're like I've held a couple of boxes that have multiple models um, and that's it. Like I'm not I've not got them for the sake of collecting them, um, but I. I think that's like fine in some ways uh, if people want to collect. Some people like to collect and have that, just that collection sealed up and whatever. I do think, and we're seeing a little bit more of it now, that there needs to be store limitations of one per person. So if yeah. you want to collect and keep it, sure, go ahead. Um, but I mean, why are you getting two of a, a model? Um, you know, it's... It's unfortunate and is what it is, but mm. I do I do think we're seeing more and more strides um, from APG and from the um, the store itself to improve the situation for people. Uh, we are seeing things yeah. last on the store longer, which is nice. Um, I don't want them to get stuck with stock they can't do anything with at all because that's no good for the company either. But it is great mm. to see things uh, staying in 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 print, so to speak. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I hope that they continue to improve on it. Yeah, there has been more, many improvements on that. I, I completely agree. Like we saw the summer Lucy, for instance, staying a few weeks uh, up. And I mean, this was a model, but I would have expected to go much, much faster. And so I was very happy to see uh, one like that uh, stay longer. At the same time, I saw quite a few people say, ah, I'm out of photo resin. I don't like that. So it probably plays. Um, it probably plays into it. Also seeing t-shirts stay available for a while. I'm, I'm very happy with that because, I mean, t-shirts used to be uh, something very rare and now are staying up. And so many art prints at Gen Con uh, hopefully are going to make their way to the store in a few days or weeks. That's going to be... I mean, I, I think that Kingdom Death has a really good, really unique art. Even though now it's a bit less unique since there are more artists uh, taking part into it. Um, uh, we saw on the Discord uh, the, the taste master saying at some point that uh, each of the philosophy booklets they have a different artist, but with art direction. So it, there is something like a, a wholeness between all of them, but then each one has its own in, little bit of individuality, which I think is a very smart thing to do. And at the same time, yeah, for for all the the art people and stuff, it's it's amazing. I, and I can't wait to have all these little booklets uh, in my hands, to be honest. I don't know how I'm going to protect them, but uh, the, the shiver in me is being sick. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, that's going to anyway, be an it's interesting a one. It, it's a booklet. The, the, older, um, the, the older rule books really are um, grease magnets. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens with the booklets. I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll have to see uh, how that goes. But I'm I'm really looking forward to see uh to see how the booklets will look like. They the art that we've seen so far looks really really good. Yeah, I, I'm just a bit less of a fan of all the Q Young um, uh, stuff. I hope I'm pronouncing it properly, um, because the girls they all look a bit samey to me. Um, but I mean that's artistic stuff uh i mean i have lots of pedro fernandez model and all the all his faces are the same so i mean i i'm not uh how to say that i'm not uh, i have some blame to take yeah um, i i get what you, i understand what you mean like uh of when we look at the first lot of stuff um they is the physics are all very similar because they had the armor kit system um but then when you start getting into the wider amount of models we see massive amounts of variation and expression in the monster designs which are super creative and the armor designs as well it can be really really creative but then we kind of get to the models and i i do you know the survivors are on a smaller size but they also do kind of a lot of them fit within the same um physique and definitely the faces are mm. um, yeah they uh, the male characters all seem to get very distinct variant faces like um uh, grimmery and ripocratis both look very different from each other and none of them look like nostin at all uh stone wrecker is a super unique 
oh, yeah. guy. Um, as one of their best models, Stone Wrecker is just incredible, like so good. I had immensely fun mm. time painting him. Um, yeah, so it's uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's. I don't think it's that's a problem that's specific to Kingdom Death's model lines. It's something that's kind of no. endemic to a lot of lines. Uh, I mean. And to a lot of artists in general. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I was supposed to say, Games Workshop, like, you, the only way you can tell Space Marines apart is whatever studs they got jammed in their face and their haircut, which tends to be either short, military, or bald. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so oh, I think we're getting close to the end of what we were talking about wrapping up. So let's uh, see. Any final thoughts uh, before we close this out, guys? Um, mostly oh. just looking forward towards the, the GC, uh, playing it with you, Audrey. It's going to be very interesting. We might actually do a little recap of that on, uh, on the last end as we play along. Yeah, so that's, that's mostly my, uh, <laughs> my last words is that I'm looking forward to the GC and discovering how it will all look. Yeah, like, likewise, I'm, I'm waiting for my label. Um, I, I'm also uh crying because i have no idea where i'm going to put it on my shelf ah. but uh, i'm probably going to put it on top of one shelf and then my cat is going to sleep on it so that's going to be okay since the new cat bed is always a good thing um and other games that come and i have no idea where to store them but that's uh yeah uh, fitting please can you fit the games into Kallax shelves please <laughs> yeah, but that, that's my that's going to be my my last thought a, a silly a silly storage issue. Yeah, it is a quite an issue. I'm lucky that I have uh, low cabinets that have enough clearance space on top of them between them and the ceiling that I can just keep the bigger boxes on top. Uh, but having said that, all of my Kingdom of Death content is on the floor in the attic. Um, <laughs> I've reached a point where the, the box is so battered that, and it was never a super durable box in the first place. Uh, I just can't care about the exterior, the contents of what matters. So, yeah. yeah. Although, although I'm beginning to think at some point I'm going to have to get a, another copy of the core game. But I think I'll wait and see if they revise it to a, you know, maybe a 1.9 or a 2.0 before I do that. Uh, oh, I think a 1.6 mm. copy. The only reason I get it now is to compare it against the um, print runs of the Gambler's Chest because I would hope that the Gambler's Chest and the 1.6 printings have matching cards backs wherever um, they share decks. That would be the hope. Uh, but outside from that, my biggest things, first of all, yep, super excited about the Gambler's Chest. It is um, going to be a really fun exciting time for us going ahead i i really do look forward to seeing how much the designers have seen what we've done as a community to their creations and adapted to them accordingly and adjusted things mm. it's going to be fun because i if, if if they respond then we're in an arms race where they make something and we decimate it and then they make something even more dangerous and then it's our job to decimate it and it's going to be fun to see where that all goes um, for definite. So it's a an exciting, I call it a conversation between us and the designers, you know, expressed through actions. Uh, and the biggest thing is that I cannot recommend enough to anyone who's listened this long. First of all, thank you for listening. I appreciate you. Yeah. And, uh, I likewise. I yes. appreciate you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, but uh, is that honestly getting a basic copy of the Kingdom Death Simulator? Um, if you like PC game at all, you really should because there's it's so good. It's a really good product. It is really really affordable, um, and the presentation just keeps improving more and more. So um, that is my biggest thing here, apart from the new future content, is I think the Kingdom Death Simulator might be the best way for your average person who doesn't have money for a lifestyle game to experience this, you know, $15, $20 or whatever to get the whole core game in an electronic version. That's a lot of content and that's great. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'd say the future looks brighter than uh, your typical settlement lantern horde, which tends to be dark and smashed up eventually. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay, so thank you so much for listening. We have been The Last Standee, so it's goodbye from Alexis. Uh, Goodbye from Belgium. And goodbye from Audrey. Au revoir! And goodbye from me, surrounded by the sea. And the... Just always remember that the second E in the stand E and the first E and the third E all stand for expansion. Expansion.